Good evening, I'm DK Ross. Now, welcome back to the TTT News. In a time when many people are trying to hold strain and just kind of ride the wave out of the pandemic, we have someone who's making forward moves. And Nissa Peer is many things, Nisa rather, and she joins us to talk about Calypso and what that is. We will find out now, but thank you so much for joining us, Nisa. Thank you so much for having me, DK. I'm really excited to share the movement and talk to you about, about Calypso and about the company. And I'm sure that pun is intended because my first Absolutely. question to you Parker. is, what is Move TT? <laughs> so Move is actually a green energy delivery company. So um, while, you know, this tricycle that hopefully everybody has seen by now, um, it operates in Port of Spain, you know, purely electric, absolutely no gas ever. Um, we use that to do deliveries in and around the Port of Spain area. And as we grow, we certainly, expect, you know, we intend to have hubs all over the country. That being said, um, we also immediately recognize the need for nationwide delivery services. I mean, in the last 36 hours, you know, it's, it's, kind of, it's been crazy in, in the best way. Um, but because, you know, we're committed to environmental responsibility, we only use and we only employ hybrid, hybrid um, car drivers to execute our deliveries nationwide. Now, when you say delivery, are you just talking about goods or, or are you speaking about people as well? We're not yet doing people. Um, there are lots of taxi services that you know, quite a few people have access to. Um, but we recognize a burning need in the market for particularly small and medium-sized businesses, which is you know, our primary clientele. Individuals as well are more than welcome to, to book our services online. But we really realize between um, just in general, and then of course COVID hit and everybody in wanted to offer some sort of delivery service, we really do cater um, to the movement of, of goods. I know, and take me through the process of actually getting Calypso. No, we, 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 okay. we say Calypso, but when, when, we, when we use the term Calypso, what, what are we speaking about? I'll, I'll get it from your mouth, thank you. So Calypso is the first of a fleet of environmentally friendly electric tricycles. Um, so we bought, uh, bought and brought Calypso into the country, quite frankly, not knowing whether or not it would be licensed. Um, it was a huge risk that we assumed, honestly. Um, it arrived in March of this year, and with no way to predict that the licensing um, authorities would shut down until I think we took it to license in June, um, and then became a very intense um, negotiation or dealing with the with the um, Ministry of Works and Transport, specifically the licensing division, to get something of this nature licensed because it's so new they, they legitimately had no idea how to how to categorize it. So eventually it was a long hard fought road but worth it. Um, and now Calypso is licensed, as you can tell, for road use and we have every intention of, of bringing in several more. And that was one of my questions because up until recently we would have been seeing uh, those signs on the highway, they're talking about no pedestrians, no bicycles, no, um, I, I think, like, visa burdens. But Calypso, not really that big. <laughs> so I try, I'm try. i trying to block it out, but sometimes when I see the vehicle, I hear in my mind. So I would prefer if you heard a Calypso song, but, you know, we'll take it. But so... In, but what were some of those conversations that were, would have been had? Because you just itemized some. But now that Calypso is on the road, uh, what are some of the things that uh, or factors that people should be thinking about? Because people love to go with what they see. Okay, but this is the new thing. There's a new phase. Yeah. Um, is there anything to, for people to be mindful of in trying to bring vehicles like, like Calypso in? Yeah, several things, and I'm really glad you asked. Um, well, first of all, to all of the people who have asked us about buying their own units from us, um, note that we, are, we, have, we do have intentions of um, selling these, these units. That being said, we are doing so responsibly. So because we're only now able to test Calypso on the roads of Trinidad and Tobago, we have many um, road tests that we would like to do. Um, we are looking for service providers who can um, literally service the vehicle should anything go wrong. Um, and these are the things that we are doing before we introduce it to the market for sale. 
That being said, as you said, everybody likes you know the new kid on the block. So I'm sure that there are um, vehicle retailers who are looking to do the same immediately. Um, and to them, I say, well, first of all, you're welcome because now because of our efforts, you're able to do that. But I would um, I would hope and I kind of caution and advise anybody who's interested in either bringing it in on their own or particularly for those interested in selling them to the members of the public that they do what we are doing, which is, you know, do those necessary safety tests. So, you know, as Trini's like to say, nobody wants to buy cat and bag, and we certainly have no intention of, of selling it either. So when we are comfortable that our um, road tests and safety tests and everything have, has been completed, then we are happy to begin the retail arm of the business. And I'm, I'm, I really like the fact that you're doing the work, putting in the work, and testing things. Because sometimes uh, a product may be tested for one surface, one temperature, one sort right. of terrain. Right. But the same way that sometimes we like to put things together and we find two extra screws, and we say, nah, man, they put that in case. Uh, we, we don't always think that the different situation applies to the product, product that we have. But yeah. before, before we go further, though, let me ask for that contact information for people who want to get more information, want to ask you some of the work that you would have done, and just want generally want to get a little closer to Move TT. Sure. So you can find us on you know, any social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram with uh, at Move TT. Uh, we are also really responsive to um, any direct messages that we get, although I have to tell you, it's struggling to keep up with the demand because the response has been phenomenal. Um, and you can always email info at move, M -O -O -V, green com, as well as um, reach us at 745-MOVE. That's our phone number. And you can also WhatsApp that number as well. Now, we take a break here now. When we come back, we want to talk about some of your clientele, some of the benefits of using this technology. And you also had a very special person that you, that you took for spin. So we talk about all that when we return. We're speaking with Nisa Pierce. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are speaking with Anissa Pear. We are part of the movement at this point in time. Move TT is the issue at hand. Now, Nisa, give me a little idea about fuel, please, in terms of like how do you, how do you fuel this type of vehicle and what kind of distance do you get when, when, you, when, you, power, when you power a vehicle like Calypso up? So, you know, because we're, we're so accustomed to... Even if, if we have hybrid vehicles and whatnot, we are, we are still an oil-rich nation, right? Or an energy-rich energy, energy rich nation. So we're accustomed to fuel being used, but there is absolutely no, no fuel in this totally electric um, vehicle. Um, so you do actually, uh, it can be charged overnight for, for a full charge. So I have literally kind of plugged it in and safely gone to bed. Um, I you know, leave it for six to eight hours and it's you know, fully charged and ready for the next morning. Um, for this particular model, we get a range of about 100 kilometers, um, but we've added a, little extra, a couple extra features that allow us to, to go a little bit further, which of course I won't, I won't divulge, I can't give away all of our trade secrets, but it is, um, you do get roughly 100 uh, kilometers, which from Port of Spain, you can actually get quite far in terms of, you know, you can certainly go to Central and back. Um, that being said, because it is low speed, we do. We have taken the decision to limit the, the vehicle um, to urban areas, so we don't take it on major highways. But because you know we are committed to safety, and we do have safety concerns. Thank you not, for that. Not because of the tricycle, but you know we are we are we have quite a few speed demons on, on the road, so we avoid uh, major highways and stick to stick to urban areas. Understood. Now, you talk about charging it up for six to eight hours. What kind of charge, what kind of power source are we looking at? Uh, do you need special cables? Um, how, how does that work? No, so one of the things we were really clear about was that we wanted it to be, because we knew um, you know, we wanted it to be an accessible vehicle. Um, it can actually be charged, you plug it into any, any outlet that, that's available. So there's no need for a, a special charger. Um, not with this model, of course, there are other models that do require that, but this one in particular, you just plug it into a wall and you go. You could put your, you could put your Calypso number two or your cell phone to charge in the same outlet. So you're talking about one, 110, 110 yeah, volts? 110, yes. Okay. And um, 
You recent you spoke a little earlier in the first half about your clients many times being small to medium. Uh, what kind of feedback are you getting from them? What kind of benefits are you giving to them? Because obviously you would be filling a need and a gap that you would have observed. What is that? So, you know, first off, this is by no means a, a, a novelty, right? This isn't, we haven't broken the wheel and, you know, completely changed the game. It is a delivery service. So then there are lots of people that are offering delivery services and doing it quite well. That being said, the difference, the move difference is that it is an on-demand service and it does operate uh, seven days a week. So literally at 11 o'clock on Friday nights, we got on this urgent panic message from someone who needed cupcakes delivered on Saturday. And it was a need that we were able to fill. Um, unlike other carriers who, you know, there's quite a bit of a processing time. Um, and in our re research has shown that sometimes when you have to get to further distances, it takes up to a week for customers to receive their goods. So we do have an, an on-demand same-day service, or you can book um, and have your goods delivered for a, a day and time of your choice. Now, I heard you recently had a special um, guest in, in yes, Calypso, His, yes, worship, His Worship the Mayor of Port of Spain. Uh, what, what, what was that like? How did that take place? And what was his feedback? Well, first of all, I really do have to thank um, Mayor Martinez. Um, I, he, I would have gone to him when Calypso was but a dream. It was just a crazy little idea kicking around in my head. Um, and it was actually supposed to be here in time for uh, Carnival this year, earlier this year. Unfortunately, she arrived uh, just a bit, a bit later than that. Um, and he was so keen on having it on the streets of, of Port of Spain, particularly during Carnival. Um, you know, offering different services, which I am really, I'm confident that by, you know, Carnival 2022, we'd be able to, to offer in, in a big way. Um, he recognized the uniqueness of the vehicle. He recognized how groundbreaking it was, the fact that it's, it's the only one in the Southern Caribbean. Most of the Caribbean, in fact, we've only found others in, um, in Bermuda. Um, heard of others in St. Vincent and uh, actually one just arrived in St. Vincent and in St. Martin. So we really have, you know, it, it's, it's a big deal for Trinidad and Tobago. It, it, and it is, um, it's, it's comforting to know that, you know, our leaders, including the mayor of Port of Spain, who, you know, will, we're operating in his city and he's quite happy to have it and quite enjoy the ride actually. He was quite surprised. It does look quite small, but there's quite a lot of room in the back and he and another person could comfortably have fit in it. Now, you're saying it's a big deal. Now, if, we, if you wanted to capitalize on that big deal, having the, having the mayor in Calypso, and because we're looking at the revitalization of Port of Spain, definitely you'd want to have like buttressing uh, infrastructure. What are some of the things that you'll be looking for? Because yes, you say it's something that you can charge at home. What happens if uh, electricity went that day? Are there certain things that you'd want to see in the urban areas to help foster use of vehicles like Calypso or others? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in fact, in the coming days, we, uh, you will see us in partnership with a service provider who is, who is going to assist in, and I, I really can't spill the beans too much, but who will assist in, in issues like that in terms of um, additional charging. We are in talks with another provider who, you know, their specialty is solar powered charging so that, you know, if electricity does go, we can in fact still operate. Um, I think today's, today was a, a, a fantastic example of, you know, things can go wrong in terms of the internet kind of shutting down for everybody really, except, you know, certain customers. And we, these are things that we are looking at. How do we navigate these, um, these issues that, that, that happen, whether it's, you know, a, a outage somewhere, uh, an under, underwater cable being destroyed. Um, another thing that we would love to see is provision for, um, provision and, and by way of particular lane so that we're able to kind of navigate you know quickly through through these street, um, streets of Port of Spain as well as any other city any other major city that we plan to go to around the country and I keep on going back to you saying that this is a big deal what does this mean for you and I want to ask the question uh, in terms of having a vision being able to follow that vision through till you have a licensed vehicle on the road and basically kind of setting a precedent of what things can do. Because you said it's, you wanted to 
have a first. Yeah. What, do you, what do you think this first will be, or what was the potential of this first looking back to, to be able to say, I did that? Well, well, I mean, I, I can check the box in terms of, you know, I not just, not only did I import it, but, you know, went through the whole process of getting it licensed and not just licensed, it's, it's operationalized, it's, you know, operating for commercial use. Um, I think the next step really is, you know, getting this fleet going, operating in all the areas um, and all the industries that we have every intention of operating in. But what I find really interesting and is another first is just how many people recognize a different mode of transport and how many people um, have come to me or have emailed or called and said, you know, we've been looking like for something like this for so long. Um, there was a woman from Belmont and I, I, you know, I hope she, I hope she's seeing this because it was really inspiring. She said all of her life she's wanted a car, but she wasn't able to afford one and, you know, she didn't want this big car to drive around she lives in belmont which of course has notoriously small streets and she saw this this vehicle and she said this is exactly what i want and for the first time in her life she's ready to purchase uh, a vehicle so there there's a lot of there's a lot of possibility there's a lot of first we've had, had parents ask us you know can we get this for our kids especially as first time um, licensed drivers because the um, the speed, the top speed is only 45 kilometers per hour. They, you know, they, there's no risk of their children speeding and then getting into these horrific accidents that we've heard about over the years. Definitely so something. Of, definitely yeah, something to look at. Yeah, there's possibility for both, you know, personal and commercial use, and I'm really excited to see it grow. And we are excited along with you, Nisa Pierce, CEO of Move TT. Thank you for dreaming big, and thank, thank you. you for waking up and helping to turn that dream into reality. And on behalf of the entire news team here, I'm DK Rosta, thank you so much for joining us. Have a good night.